And the devil is constantly telling us that we should feel guilty for being happy. We should be guilty for celebrating. We should be we should feel guilty for um, our mistakes and our sins. And Jesus is like, no, I already I already dealt with all that. I already paid for all that. I don't want you living in misery. I want you living in joy. And the only difference is what you think, what you believe It's you, you, you might be born again, but still be miserable because you're still relating to God as his, as your master rather than as your father. Well, Merry Christmas, global family, and welcome to the power to change today. You know, wherever you're watching our program from around the world, I want to remind you that the best is ahead. Yes, the best is yet to come. Something good is going to happen to you today. And listen, I'm about to share one of my favorite teachings with you about pure joy, how to be free from the religion of misery. The truth is religion causes misery and Christianity isn't a religion. You see, religion makes people sad, but God's grace makes people glad. And the greatest gift that I can give you this holiday season is the gift of truth. The truth that your relationship with God will never again have to be based on what you do for him. But your relationship with God will forever be based on and rest on what he has done for you. That's the good news. This is what the holiday season is all about. And every season is all about. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Enjoy today's teaching and share it with someone who needs to hear it. God bless. Watch this. There's two kinds of relationships and two kinds of um, well, two two versions of Christianity in the world. There's the version that is servant based. I'm a servant of God. And then there's the version that is son based. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. And you see, the difference is the 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 servant or the slave mentality that God saved me. So I have to obey him now and I have to submit to him now and I'm going to serve him now. That mentality will rob you of all joy. Your Christianity will be a joyless Christianity. You still might be saved because you put your faith in Jesus Christ, but you still have a slave mentality or a mentality that I'm a lowly inferior servant to God. But the God. But that's that's that is how people related to God in the Old Testament. Testament. But that's not how we relate to God under the new covenant after Jesus died on the cross. So let me take you to a scripture that will kind of bring clarity to that and then we'll build on this. And soon you'll be you'll be happily leaping and skipping and being so filled with joy that you'll have the best meal you've ever had at lunchtime. All right. Are you ready for that? Um, So look at Hebrews chapter three, verse five, and we're going to contrast Moses to, and it, with Jesus. And we're going to compare the two. Moses represents the law, the commandments, obedience. And Jesus represents grace and his sacrifice, his obedience so that we can be made righteous. And that is the difference. And now watch the mentality, the difference in the mentality between being under the law and being under grace. Now, Moses was faithful in all of his house as a servant. Now, look at what he how he describes Moses. Moses was faithful in all of his house as a servant. So Moses saw himself as a servant. Verse six. But Jesus was faithful over his house as a son, as a son. So we have this contrast between uh, the version of of religion that is that I'm a servant of God. And don't get me wrong, serving is great, but it should be the overflow of what we do because we're so grateful, not because we're trying to perform so God will accept us. But notice the old covenant under the law, you have a servant master relationship with God. People had a servant master relationship. But under grace, we have a son 
father relationship, a daughter father relationship through Jesus Christ. So Moses presided over a, a, a slave based servant based mentality of religious misery. Jesus presides over a grace based sonship sons and daughters of God relationship with God. Now, I'm going to tell you something in your spirit. If you're born again here today in your spirit, no matter what you do and no matter how you think you are a son or daughter of God. The problem is, is that most Christians, they're born again in their spirit, but they're still operating under the religion that Moses presided over as servants rather than the relationship that Jesus presides over as sons and daughters of God. Are you with me still? Does that make sense? Do you see the distinction? The reason why we have the old covenant and the new covenant is the old covenant reveals man's sins so that they realize their need for a savior. The old covenant reveals our sins exposes our sins so that we realize our need for a savior. The new covenant removes our sins so that we can be grateful for our savior. Look at how the father relates to to his children in Mark, chapter one, verse 11, a very familiar scripture here in this church, at least one one of my favorites, if not my all time favorite scripture. After Jesus comes, comes up out of the waters of baptism, a voice from heaven. It is the voice of God. It's the voice of love. Really, it's the voice of God. God is love. And a voice comes out of heaven and says, you are my beloved son and in you I'm well pleased. And now that verse is awesome. Just how it's stated right there. But sometimes we we kind of get too familiar with certain terms like beloved. The word beloved, it sounds like something we say at a funeral. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to mourn the life and the death and the sacrifice and the the, the home going of brother so and so. (laughs) And so it doesn't it takes away the power of the word beloved and then well pleased the son in whom I am well pleased. We think, oh, well, Jesus pleased Jesus pleased God, but I could never please God. But you know what? Jesus, when God says this about him, Jesus hasn't even preached a sermon yet. Jesus hasn't done a miracle yet. Jesus hasn't raised the dead yet, hasn't died for our sins yet, hasn't fed the multitude yet, hasn't cast out a demon yet, hasn't cleansed the leper yet, hasn't done anything yet. And yet God is already pleased with him. That ought to tell you something. All the things you do do not equal pleasing God. But what equals pleasing God is when you accept when you accept your place as a son or daughter in the family of God through Jesus Christ, that makes God happy. So let me read this verse to you from a version that I think brings it brings clarity and uh, illuminates our minds a little bit better in the New Living Translation. He says it this way. He says, and a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. Now. To feel that. Is what Jesus felt. And so he went the rest of his life on this earth, healing the sick, raising the dead, not to try to get God to approve of him, but because he was operating in a place of complete approval, he knew the father's love. He knew the father's heart. He wasn't trying to perform. He wasn't trying to earn anything from God. He got all that before he ever did anything for God. And this is where most Christians miss it, is that we think, well, God's not pleased with me because I haven't gotten the sin out of my life. I haven't changed this. I haven't fixed this. I'm still undisciplined in my prayer life. I still haven't done all that I'm supposed to do. I still haven't changed my attitude. But God does not measure you by that. All of those things are better for you if you do change your attitude. It's better for you if you do stop sinning. It's better for you. But none of those things shape God's view of you. That's hard only for religious people to swallow because religious people want to feel like they did it. And that they're better 
than the people that didn't do it. Mm. Now, so so a voice. So how does God speak? How do we know God's voice? Because sometimes we feel condemned. Sometimes we feel guilty. Sometimes we feel ashamed. Sometimes we just beat ourselves up. Sometimes we think God's mad at us. Sometimes we think God's judging us. Sometimes we think God's not listening. Sometimes we think God's so far away. All of those feelings and thoughts have to subject themselves to this truth. And what is the truth? You're his dearly loved son or daughter. And you bring him great joy. What? When will I bring him great joy after I do some stuff for God, after I clean up my act? Wait, wait a minute. Jesus didn't do anything yet. He didn't do anything yet. And he brought the father great joy. Just being his son brought the father great joy. He says he loves you just the way you are, but he'll never leave you. He'll clean some stuff up and he'll help fix it. And, you know, he'll. But but here's the thing. He doesn't clean you up and then say, OK, now I'll accept you. He accepts you just the way you are. And then a process of transformation takes place because now your life feels safe in the love of the father. You see, if you don't feel safe in his hands, none of that's going to happen. You're not going to you're going to be defensive and then you're going to be like, oh, I'm not coming to this church. This church judges people. This church judges me. This church judges. And then we got religious people that are like, well, we better judge because, you know, we, we can't let we can't let people think that abortion is OK and homosexuality is OK. We don't want people to think that everything's OK, but we don't want to hinder people from having a chance to feel the love of God. And then and then their heart, then their heart opens up and then by the grace of God, we can delicate delicately. And if I'm involved, not so delicately, but we can delicately operate in the hearts and the souls of men and women so that they realize how to renew their minds which will transform their life because you can't change your behavior long term until you change the way you think. But you won't change the way you think if you're defensive. So what do you what's going to lower your defenses? Love. The father's love. But when you're not sure of the father's love, you'll do one of two things. You'll rebel against it like the prodigal son did or you'll try to serve so hard and obey so hard to try to perform for the love, which is what the older son did. Neither of those things were right. Both of those men were sons. Both of those boys were sons, but they thought like slaves. One 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 emancipated himself. I'm getting out of here. Give me the money, dad. Give me my portion. I'm out of here because I want to find my freedom because he felt like he was a slave. So he thought escaping or leaving was his way, his path to freedom, while the other son thought his path to freedom was total obedience, never miss a day out in the field working for the father, never celebrate or rejoice or have fun or let your guard down because you got to perform for the father if you want the father's love and if you want the father's approval that that kept him in bondage. Both of the sons were sons in their position with their father, but they were slaves in their mind. Which always leads to one of two things. Total throw off all restraint and just do whatever you want to find freedom, which you won't find. Or be a slave to obedience and you'll never have any joy and you'll never be good enough. And God doesn't even measure you by that, but you think he does. And that's total bondage. And there's there's no there's no joy in that relationship either. In Galatians four, verse four, look at what he says. When the fullness of time had come, 
God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. When when he says sons, he's not talking about gender. He's talking about sonship, which is sons and daughters. Uh, Boy and girl is gender. But son here is a, a person with the full rights of the family. That's what the word son means. So this translation, this is actually translated as when he says that we might receive the adoption as sons is literally translated as that we might receive the full rights as sons, the full rights. You see, if you're living in somebody's house, you don't have the full rights just because you're in a foster home. You don't have the full rights just because you're living in that house. You don't have the full rights just because you're visiting that house. You have the full rights when you're adopted. When you're adopted, you have all the rights that a son or a daughter would have. So when you're born again, you not only are in the family of God now, you're going to heaven, but you have all the rights, the full rights of a son or a daughter of God, the full rights. And this is what the devil doesn't want you to know. You know, Adam and Eve, when they were in the garden, God spoke to them and he said, hey, hey, Adam, hey, Eve, you see this garden that I put you in? It's beautiful, right? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful, Lord. It's beautiful. It's great. OK, see all these trees in the garden? Oh, yeah, Lord, I see all the trees. The Lord said, eat from all of them freely. The first commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve was not don't. The first commandment was do. Eat freely. And it wasn't do this holy thing. It was eat. Enjoy. It's free. Then he said after that, then he said, oh, and you see that one in the middle, the tree of knowledge, of good and evil. Don't eat from that one, because the day you eat from it, you'll die. Like what loving father wouldn't tell his kids, don't go out in the street when the cars are passing by. What loving father wouldn't say, don't you know, don't drink that poison. It'll kill you. A a loving father is going to tell his child that that's what he was saying. He wasn't like, I'm going to tempt you. He was like, let me tell you, the trees in the garden were the trees in the garden. The fact is, is there is a tree of knowledge of good and evil in the universe and there are trees of life and there are trees of plenty and and, and, and fruit. It's not God couldn't say, well, I can't put that tree in there because because that because the knowledge of good and evil existed, it was in the garden. It wasn't like God made up a tree that he was going to now tempt Adam and Eve with the knowledge of good and evil existed in the in the world. It existed in the universe. It exists. The fact that there's evil is only because there is good. The fact that there's darkness is only because there is light. Darkness is the absence of light. Light dispels the darkness. Light is more powerful than the darkness. Good is more powerful than evil. But what what God told them was he was giving them a pattern for living. The pattern for living is don't focus on what you can't eat. Focus on what you can eat and eat freely so that when you do walk by the garden, the the tree in the middle of the garden, you're so full from eating freely of all the other trees that you don't you don't even have an appetite. It's not because I'm so holy. I would never eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'm too holy. I'm too good for that. I would never, no, 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 no. Ooh, anathema. I curse you tree in the garden of Eden. I will not eat. I will not touch. I will not look at you. No, no, no. (laughs) But we think when we we think by avoiding sin, we are so holy. And it's not about our holiness. That's not God's way. God's way is to eat freely as sons and daughters in his house. And then when life brings other trees, bad trees that are not good for you, you don't have the appetite for it. It's nothing about religion. It's nothing about how good and holy you are. It's about your full. Oh, I'm too full. Like, what do you say when you you go to your favorite restaurant, you eat everything that they give, you order three meals. <laughs> you just eat it and eat it. appetizers. By the time the appetizers have come, you're not even hungry for the meal. 
the meal comes, and you stuff that down. I'm not saying you. I'm just imagine. I'm just saying imagine that. I'm not saying anybody here is a pig. I'm just saying imagine. <laughs> imagine that. And and you're now you're full. Now you're like, man, you oh gosh, now you don't even like food. Within 30 minutes, you're like, I'm, I'm never going to eat again. And then they bring the dessert tray. And it looks good. There's no doubt it's beautiful. It's pretty. It's colorful. But what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, I'm so full. I couldn't eat another bite. That's what happens when you taste and see that God is good. And when you eat freely of the good, you lose your appetite for the bad. Well, what you're hearing is the real gospel, the antidote for all misery, for all sorrow and sadness. The news about Jesus Christ is the greatest news that has ever swept this earth and its freedom from bondage. It leads you to freedom, freedom from fear, freedom from bondage, freedom from anxiety and worry, freedom from depression and sadness. No matter what this season has looked like for you, no matter what it's looked like for your loved ones, no matter how hard it has seemed, God has an amazing future for you. He's not finished working something beautiful in you. All things he makes all things beautiful in his time. So that's where our joy comes from. That's where our hope comes from. It's so simple. Just I just want you to receive it. But before we go any further, I want to take a moment to pray for anyone who has never received Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord. Today, you can be absolutely sure of your salvation, you can be absolutely sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die. Just pray this prayer after me. Just pray this prayer right now and receive a relationship with God, not religion, a relationship. Just pray this heavenly father. I invite Jesus Christ into my life. That's it. Just pray that as my savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. And from this moment forward, the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all my sins, and I am a child of God. Now, if you pray that prayer, I've got a special gift for you that I want to send you. You can see on your screen. Let me give it to you as my gift to you. And listen, for everybody, I'm believing for these seeds of pure joy that have been planted in your heart that are going to free you from the religion of misery unhappiness, depression, sadness. And we're also doing something special. And I want to encourage you. One of the ways to really experience joy is giving to others. And one of the things we're doing uh, is very special for children this year. And it's been a tough year for all families and kids around the world. And we want to do our part as a ministry to help. And it's not too late for you to be a part. So my announcer is going to tell you more. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to be right back to pray for you. Gregory Dickow Ministries is wanting to go the extra mile for families in need this holiday season. Our focus is on children and families who have been hit hard financially due to the global crisis. Gregory Dickow Ministries has been feeding thousands of families over the last several months. And now for the Christmas holidays, we are providing meals and toys to support families who have been hit the hardest this year. Would you consider giving your best gift today to help those in need? There is no greater joy than to give. For your generous gift toward our holiday relief of $25 or more, Gregory Dickow wants to send you today's teaching in its entirety, entitled Pure Joy, Freedom from the Religion of Misery. Plus, as a very special bonus for calling today, we'll rush to you one of Gregory Dickow's top-rated five-CD teaching series, End of Religion. Just ask for offer 1220A. And with your extraordinary generous gift toward our holiday relief of $50 or more today, you will receive everything you see on the screen. Plus, you will also receive Greg Redickow's new teaching, The Real Jesus. Just ask for offer 1220B. And if you call right now and donate $100 or more towards our holiday relief, you will receive everything you see on the screen. Plus, as an additional thank you gift, Greg Redickow would like to send you a signed copy of his best-selling book, The Power to Change Today, and a special gift of all the teachings above in a digital format on Greg Redickow's brand new jump drive card. 
plus 10 of Gregory Dickow's favorite teachings about today's topic. Just ask for offer 1220C. Don't wait. We need your urgent help to assist families in need. Call the number on your screen now. Well, I want to encourage you and even inspire you to do something in the next few moments that will change somebody's eternal destiny. You know, the collection of teachings that you just saw and more are available as my thank you gift for your generous support of this ministry, including today's brand new teaching in its entirety called Pure Joy, Freedom from the Religion of Misery and 10 of my favorite teachings. Today, I want to give you this 10 of my favorite teachings on this digital jump drive. And I want you to get this teaching. It'll change your life. It will empower you. It will free you from fear, anxiety, worry, depression, you name it, freedom from all negative emotions and freedom to be everything God created you to be. And together, I want you to know we're making a massive impact on helping those in need this holiday season. And as I've said many times before, our love is best expressed when we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this ministry is reaching more and more people each day. People are hungry for God's love. They're hungry for his salvation. We're preaching the gospel of love, mercy and grace in six different languages around this world. So with your gift today, I'm able to continue reaching these precious souls and populate heaven in Jesus name. That's why I need your urgent support. I hope you'll continue to pray and I hope you'll continue to give and support today. Now, let me pray for you and your family. Father, I thank you for every person watching this broadcast. Give them hope that their life is going to get better and better. Give them hope that their best days are ahead. Lord, give them inspiration and encouragement that the greatest days are already written for them by you and they will come to pass no matter what it looks like in Jesus name. Amen. Well, listen, don't miss our next broadcast. Tell your friends, invite them over for a watch party. And if you don't have a church home, join me through our global online church community. You can find it on GregoryDicka.com. Don't miss our next broadcast. I can't wait to see you then. God bless. <laughs>